What's up, what's up, divas? And what's up, what's up, divos? It's your girl, April, and you already know what time it is. So it is Wednesday, and it is all about real talk. And I'm gonna just get it off my chest because I know you bitches are nosy, okay? Because I know you guys are like, oh, wait a minute, we seeing some newness. So, yes, I did change my wrap on my hair, okay? No, I'm just joking with you guys. But I did change that, but I also did change my room setup. And as well as that, as I did start messing around more with my camera settings. So in case the color looks a little bit different, just deepen the contrast a little bit more for this video. But yes, I did go ahead and change my head wrap. Um, I just, I did it a little bit different this time. So for those of you who have been asking me for a, a scarf, wrap video tutorial i do have one but it's really old so i will be doing a new one um just give me a couple weeks and i'll post up a new one for you guys but yes also the room has been changed so i did decide to change my room around um there really isn't a lot of new things in here um but i did change it around so the last few years i've been living here for three years my bed was always behind me i mean and it is behind me right now but it would be up against this um the headboard would be against this wall where the dresser is and it'll basically come out behind me so this time I decided to do the opposite I put the bed where the dresser is the dresser where the bed was and vice versa I got my carpets cleaned and just changed it up and yeah it gave me a little bit a little bit more space um I did want to kind of like move my area where I sit at which is my desk where my computer is but because I have these humongous windows in front of me and on the side of me and a huge balcony glass door I cannot change the setup because I love the natural sunlight and that's kind of like what I'm working with right now I do have lights um, camera lights camera lighting studio lighting a ring light whatever but I prefer not to use it if I can get natural light then good now today it's kind of gloomy there's no sunlight and a bitch is happy like it is so gloomy outside and I know y'all probably like what is gloomy and you happy when you live in Arizona there's 365 days a year for everybody and out of those 365 there is 330 fucking days of sunlight and living in New York where I'm from it would rain like two weeks straight and that shit would piss me off but when you move to a different state in the climate the weather is totally different you you start to really appreciate the things that you don't have anymore so like with here there's no four seasons really to me like there is in New York so when it's a gloomy day and it's cloudy and it's raining I'll be like yes bitch yes I I love it. I love it when it's gloomy because I don't see that so much. So right now there's no sun, but I am getting the cloudy light and I'm happy with that because it's nice out. So yes. And if you guys are wondering, I will do a room tour. I did a room tour when I first moved in and things have changed a little bit. Um, I do have videos for how I made my dresser, how I made my headboard, and also how I made those pink frames behind me um, because I did have a makeup room. So I just changed some of the things on my wall. Those pictures are actually from my makeup room that I had for a few months and then I transformed it back into my daughter's room because she decided to come back. Um, so I didn't want them to go to waste and plus I really didn't want to keep using the drabby black pictures that I had on the wall So I decided to brighten it up because I love pink and the colors that I did have in here was black white and like a really pale pink which is like the color of this box right here I had a lot of that and I still have that in here So I kind of incorporated the brighter pink and also I bought a new comforter set but I'm going to be honest and tell you, I love this comforter set. It was from Walmart. It was really cheap. You get like eight, six, seven pieces, eight pieces in it for 40 bucks. But it's not as thick as the gray one that I had. The gray one did, of course, cost more. It was double the price and I got it from Ross and it was just thicker and it was more elegant. So I'm going to take that to the laundromat because, you know, you need like a really big washing machine for those. And I'll probably end up putting it back on my bed because I feel weird with just that that comforter. Like if you ever have a comforter and it's just so snuggly and even though you don't snuggle with it as much, it might be at the bottom of your bed on your feet and. And it just feels really good on your feet with this one it's so thin I feel like I'm exposed to just like the environment I don't know it just doesn't make me feel comfortable and it just it just is not thick enough and I know if it when it does get cold here in the winter time because trust me I've been here three years so I'm kind of like adjusting to the the climate 
This is not going to keep me warm because so it's pretty. It's really pretty for the looks. But I think I'm going to put my gray one back on because it just makes me feel a lot more safer if you guys, you know, can relate to that. But yeah, so I do love my room because it's very girly and a lot of things in here are things that I've repurposed. Um, you know, I've had already and I repurposed it or I've went to the thrift store and I've just changed it and reworked with what I had. I work with what I have and I'm really grateful for the things that I do have and I do make it work. So I'm really, really appreciative of that. So, but yeah, so um, if you want a room tour, just let me know and I'll be more than happy to give you a new room tour. But other than that, yeah. Um, yeah, let's move on to this real talk. If you have a real talk situation that you would love to discuss, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers at gmail, muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. And please put in the subject line, real talk. So that way I can get back to you as soon as possible. And if it's like really talk, real talk, urgent, just put urgent in the subject line too. So that way I don't know what to do. So I have three for you this week. Oh, also, um, before I even go into, um, I've been working out at the YMCA, like I've been telling you guys, and I've been trying to lose weight and it is very, very hard. Trust and believe. So I have been eating things like this, roasted nuts and yogurt and slim fast. Well, not the brand slim fast, but the, um, the Walmart brand slim fast. Cause it all works the same. And I've been going to the gym and sometimes I get motivated and sometimes I don't. So, and I haven't had a drink in over a week. Okay. Cause those are calories too. So I have stopped drinking my favorite vodka screwdriver. So, but I wanted to challenge you guys to join me. For those of you who want to join me in this weight loss journey, we will give updates every Wednesday um, or every other Wednesday is up to you. I want to do like a separate video. I'm so sorry to be chewing on camera. I want to do a separate video for, um, weight loss journey. So let me think about that. But for right now, I'm going to include it in next week's, but for this week, um, I just wanted to tell you guys that if you want to join me in this weight loss journey, it would be really helpful and fun because when I used to go work out, I would go with my ex-husband and that made me lose a lot of weight because he would go with me. And he was like more or less my motivation. And also I was like kind of like vlogging about it on YouTube and giving updates. And that was more or less more my motivation because I know I could not come through with you guys and fail and be like, mm, well, I give up. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't do that. So that's why I decided this time around again to just, you know, share with you guys. So that way, listen, there is times when I really don't want to be on that treadmill or whatever elliptical, but I know that I'll do it if I have something to show and prove to you guys. So that makes it more motivational. So yeah, so we're going to start that. So other than that, let's get on to this real talk because I know you guys are like waiting. Okay. Hello, April. I'm not sure if you'll be able to get to my email. And rather you respond to this email on YouTube or just simply an email. Either way, I'll be grateful. This is going to be long, but trust me, it's not going to be a boring rant in my opinion. Let me just start off by saying I love your channel. You are blunt, funny, and almost like the Ricky Smiley radio show. I am always entertained. Now to my story, the names are changed. My name is Diamond and I've been married to my husband, um, Bookie, um, for nine years. This marriage has been held since the very beginning. We also have an eight year old daughter together. I'll sum this story up as much as I can. My husband is what I would call an alcoholic. There has been numerous times in which he had promised to quit, but had only quit as long as three months and only because he was arrested because he violated a restraining order I had placed on him for attacking me while drunk. Though he's never really beat my ass, violence is violence. There has been so many times I forgave him for his actions after he's gotten drunk and yet he'll manage to fuck up again. Fast forward last year, I ended up cheating on him with a much, much older man. I'm 29 and he's 60 to each its own, but they are, but they are some nice older men out here and he's a construction worker still making money. But this gentleman bought me things and most importantly, he listened and acknowledged me. I still, I still deal with him now because my husband has still yet to get his shit together. He drinks all day and I hardly spend time with him because he's either on the phone drinking or out in his car drinking and listening to music. But when he's at work, 
when, but when he's at work bored and or on his break, I'll, he'll give all his convers he'll he'll have all the conversation in the world for me as he calls me six times a day. Fast forward, we moved to our new home a few months and Bookie mentioned how my 40 something year old neighbor makes him uncomfortable because of a conversation she had with him not too long ago about she's looking for a man that won't get attached and just for sex. Yet he still sits out on the porch carrying a simple conversation while I'm there. But you're uncomfortable? So I asked him to not talk to her because it bothers me. Now that may seem like an unfair request seeing how I cheated, but might I add, he had forms of cheating throughout our marriage before I even had my affair, and I would never disrespect him by acknowledging a guy right next door. I kind of think he likes her. This is my thing. I can't let that bitch see me sweat because for one, she looks like Miss Pearl from next Friday, just without the mustache, and for two, I could keep my husband and take her boyfriend if she has one. I don't think too many people want wolf pussy foot in these days. My question to you is, do you think it's time to let this marriage go? I think so, but I don't even know what steps to take to even start moving on. I love him, but, but I'm not in love. If the bitch can take my husband from me and have him keep the receipt, no returns, Please respond. I didn't put nearly as much as I wanted to, but I needed something to start off with. Thank you so much. Wow. I'm going to just drink some water for this because, like I said, I'm on a diet, so I ain't got no drink. Okay, so Diamond. Diamond got a husband and they've been married for, I think she said nine years. They got a, yeah, they've been married for nine years. So they've probably been together longer than that because they've been married for nine years. They got an eight year old daughter. Her husband is an alcoholic. He will quit for like three months and just all kind of shit. He only stops because he gets arrested. Now they done moved to their new home. She got herself an old neighbor, an old cougar. 40 year old cougar um but wait a minute we can't call her that because a bitch i'm 42 so i don't put i don't consider myself to be a cougar but and if i am i'm a damn fucking young looking cougar all right but either way she has been cheating on her husband for some time now with some 60 year old man and she's 29 so he 31 years her senior but now that they done moved to her new house to their new house she got some 40 year old something 40 something year old neighbor talking to her husband, Bookie, talking about how she want to have a relationship with somebody, but not have an attachment, just basically friends with benefits. This, this neighbor next door is telling Diamond's husband this shit. Okay. So it's like, I live next door to you, Diamond. And I see your husband on the porch and I'm like, listen, I'm looking for a man that could just come and lay the pipe down. I ain't trying to have no attachments with him. But, you, you know, your husband go inside and tell you how he's uncomfortable, how uncomfortable that made him feel. But, yeah, it's still that nigga still on the porch with her every other day or whenever he can when his ass is not drunk. Or maybe he is. Who even knows? Having conversations with her. But Diamond, you are concerned about that. But yet and still you cheating on your husband. First of all, you don't know what to do. Sound like you sound like me for a second. Not the whole scenario, but enough of that shit, especially with the alcoholic part. Okay. Because if you all, all can relate, my ex-husband was an alcoholic. Okay. That nigga drank enough and he wouldn't drink every day. But he drank enough, and that shit ruined a lot of things in my life with him. So, yes, alcohol ruined my marriage. And he done crashed some cars. We done got in some arguments. He done got arrested on numerous occasions because of alcohol. So, yes, I can totally relate. And those are the reasons why I got tired of him. And that is the reason why I got divorced, okay? And that is the main reason why I moved to Arizona, okay? Now, if y'all recall on, I did tell you guys in a past video, and I'm just going to speed it up, that I left my husband um, in July, in June, was it June? July of 2013, because in January, January 5th or 6th of 2013, he got drunk and we had a physical fight. Like he got drunk and a nigga bit me. Okay. So that is the reason why I got tired, finally fed up because you're not about to do no shit like that to me. Now you bugging. 
Crashing the car is one thing, but you're not about to bite me, nigga. You crazy. So that is the reason why I'm where I'm at. And I'm happy that I moved. I'm, thank you for biting me because you have changed my life a whole bunch. You just don't realize. But unfortunately, I had to go through that to see that. But either way, here nor there. I left his ass because for one, your alcoholism is fucking up my lifestyle, my home, my children's life. My kids don't need to see that. I don't need to have shit broken and arguments with you and wondering if you're going to come through the door drunk and what kind of bullshit is about to pop up. I don't think anybody should have to live like that. Either man, female, doesn't matter. Woman, child, dog, cat. No one should have to live like that with somebody that's an alcoholic. If you don't drink, if you're not an alcoholic, then why should you have to live with one? And um, honestly, two alcoholics living together ain't going to work neither. Okay. That shit don't work either. But maybe if you're not in love, and, and these are the same exact things that I would say to him because I loved my husband dearly, and to this day, I still do. But he would always say to me, I'm in love with you. I love you. I'm in love with you. But you're not in love with me. And I would tell him, I'm not in love with you. I love you, but I'm not in love with you. And you know something? I tried very hard to get that in love feeling back. And regardless of whatever I tried and whatever he tried, that shit did not work, okay? So when shit is broken and it cannot be repaired and you have been through turmoil and you have been through the hurricane, the tornado, the fucking snowstorm, rain, pour, and everything else. And you just can't get back. You can't snap back to it because you have been through enough. And that makes you numb over time. Okay. I have never thought that I would feel that way about anybody in my life to where the point is I have no regards of how they feel anymore. And I could just get up and leave and take their kids and just be gone. You know what I'm saying? I never thought that I would feel that way about him, but yet, and still over time, it will drain you. Okay. The shit that they put you through, regardless of their, their race, their, regardless of their sex, whether they're man or female, the shit that you have to go through in a relationship, if it's repetitive and it's over and over and they're doing it over and over again, that shit will numb you and you will get to the point in your life. Like, you know what? I have no feeling I'm over it. I'm done. I can't do this no more. You know what I'm saying? And that is the reason why you ain't in love with him no more. It's not that you want to be, or it's not that you don't want to be. It's the things that he's done to make you not be in love with him anymore. And that's nobody's fault but his. And then you can also blame yourself for it as well, um, Diamond, because I'm not about to sit here and make it seem like you so holier than now. Because let's just face facts. Your husband might be an alcoholic, but what gives you the fucking right and audacity to go out and cheat on him? Regardless if he did it again, because it seems like you try to justify that shit in the email talking about, well, he's a cheater on you or he's disrespected you. Two wrongs never make a fucking right. Never. Okay. Never make a right. Two wrongs mean, um, they're negatives. Two wrongs don't make a right. Yeah. You may think two negatives make a, a fucking positive, but not in this scenario. Okay. Not in this situation. Let's just get that. Let's just fucking get that together. Now that's your husband. You guys been married. You guys have a kid together. I'm not going to say it's your womanly duty to seek help for him because I heard that same shit from a bunch of bitches on YouTube talking about, I shouldn't have divorced him. I should have got him some fucking help. Let me tell you something sweetheart. You got to help yourself first before I can fucking help you. And if you ain't about to take that fucking step and take your ass and get some fucking help therapy or whatever fucking kind of shit you need to get done, then why the fuck am I going to bend over backwards and fucking spread eagle and do everything else in the world for you when you ain't about to help your motherfucking self? I'm sorry, but neither one of y'all is right. But I tell you what though, I wouldn't let no alcoholic motherfucker drag me down to the dirt. Your marriage been over, girlfriend. Been over. You got yourself a new boo. I ain't gonna say he really knew. That nigga's 60 years old. But like you said, to each his own. So I'm not gonna sit here and judge you for the person you are. Me, personally, I wouldn't have cheated. You know what? I don't even know what I would have did at that moment in time because everybody's situation is different. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna judge you. However... You ain't right, and neither is he. And you guys got an eight-year-old daughter that's living in the household, and this poor child is stuck in the middle when she got an alcoholic father and a cheating-ass mother right here, okay? And then for you to get upset about the neighbor next door talking shit and your husband going on the porch, well, you know what? I can totally relate to that because, first of all, if you want to cheat, cheat. But nigga, don't be so disrespectful as to do that shit in front of me. And therefore, also, neither one of them bitches know that you cheating on him, okay? So therefore, old lady bastard, who the fuck are you to be coming up to my husband being disrespectful to me, talking about you trying to find a man with no strings attached so he can lay the pipe down because you need to get the vitamin D? I 
I wish a bitch would. I wouldn't give a fuck how old this bitch was, whether she was 40, 60, 80, or 100. If you had the audacity to open your mouth and say to my motherfucking man how you was looking for a man to dick you down and get no attachments, bitch, I think that's more or less like a come on and you kind of drop some fucking low blows, dry begging old cougar ass bitch. I would snap your motherfucking neck or I would read you like the Webster's Dictionary with the quickness and then send you back to motherfucking school. Hello. So for one, that old bitch next door is totally in the wrong, regardless if you're cheating on your husband or not. Neither one of them know about it. She has no business coming to your surroundings and saying some shit like that to your husband. That's some shit you talk about with your girlfriends. Or that's some shit you say to a nigga because you trying to ho holler or you trying to blow hints, drop hints like <clears throat> wink, wink. I was just trying to let you know that, you know, I ain't hard up for a relationship, but a bitch is easy if you want some pussy tonight. That's what you tell a nigga. Those are the type of things you tell a nigga if you're trying to get some. I'm just saying. And her old ass is dropping hints. So, I'm sorry. She can have your husband if you want him and no receipts, no returns. However, I would still let her know and put her in her place. Listen, old lady bastard, okay? We about to have a conversation and it's going to be about your tongue and the words that come out of your goddamn mouth. I would let her know. And also, I would let my husband know, too, that I find it very disrespectful and disgusting that he's sitting on the porch talking to this old bitch about sexual things. Now, yeah, you might not be in the right. And neither is his ass. But if you're going to cheat on somebody, you don't do that shit in the open eye for everybody else to see. Because that's just, for one, you already being disrespectful. But for two, we ain't about to really be disrespectful and do that shit in the open where everybody in the fucking block can talk about you and your family. That's all you need. Y'all just moved over there. Y'all just moved over there. And you got this old bitch coming over there talking about how she want to find somebody to dick her down and not be having no strings attached. Y'all just moved over there. Y'all ain't even friends like that. And she talking some shit like that. I'm sorry, but I've been living here three years. I lived here three years and I only speak to one of my neighbors. The rest of the motherfuckers don't even like me, which is cool because I'm good with that. You know what I'm saying? I don't really want y'all to like me because once you have neighbors and then you become friendly with them, the motherfuckers want to be in your business or they want to be friends with you and come over to your house. And I'm sorry, but I don't need you coming to my motherfucking house unannounced because I don't appreciate people knocking on my motherfucking door. And for two, I don't need you in my business because if that's the case, I got you two for that. I can fucking tell them my motherfucking business, okay? It's just a big difference. But yes, me and my neighbors, we don't speak. I guess because I already had to tell one of them he better move before I pop his ass up on my motherfucking hood. And for two, the other old lady, she done came four houses down, seen my fucking Tahoe getting towed, put on a flatbed. She done came four houses down. First, she came outside and was looking. Then the old bitch came. And when I say old, she like 70, came all the way down and stood in front of my driveway watching them drag my fucking truck out of the goddamn garage and onto the flatbed. I'm like, can I help you? She like, no. I was like, so what you standing here for? You thinking my car getting repo? No, it's mine. I own this. Because that's how nosy neighbors are. They nosy. Fucking people are nosy. And I'm sorry, no disrespect, but it seems like it was only the white people that was being nosy like that to me around here. Okay? The black motherfuckers, they stay in their lane and don't fucking bother me. And I don't say nothing to their net asses either. But you got your old ass old lady bastard neighbor already trying to Drop hints to your husband. Listen, that bitch would need to be put in her place a long fucking time ago. When you first got there, you should have let it be known who the fuck you was. And maybe that bitch would not have came across the turf and ran her fucking mouth. But now she's a little bit too comfortable. So you're going to have to let her know one way or the other. As for your husband and your marriage with him, you are not in love with him. And you don't want to have any parts with him. And I get it. I totally understand. And trust me when I tell you and I say that I get it. And I totally understand. Because. I totally understand and I totally get it for those purposes and those reasons because of the alcoholism. Let me tell you something, Diamond. 
It ain't going to get no better until he decides to get it better. It don't matter how much you tell that nigga you're going to leave him or you're going to love him or you're going to help him or what he needs to do. He can yes you until you blew in the face. It ain't going to get no better. And he's not going to change until he's ready to change. Not because of what you want, not because of your daughter, not because of the jail system, because let's just face facts. My ex-husband was put in jail many a times too for the alcoholism. And he always promised, I'm, I ain't drinking no more. I stopped drinking. I quit drinking. Yeah, nigga, you in jail. They don't serve alcoholic beverages. Last time I seen them serve fucking Heineken and Budweiser with dinner trays. When was that? You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not saying I've been in jail. I mean, I've been in jail before. I've been in jail, you know, for a week and a half. I've been there um, for fucking domestic violence issues. You know, I keep learning to pause to myself. However, I don't recall them serving wine at church or anything like that. So, yeah, you, you stop drinking. Really? It'd be a lot of broken promises. A lot, and I'm telling you what, I used to get so fucking tired of all those broken promises with him. Like, dude, I don't really want to hear that shit no more. It's lame. It's old. I don't want to hear it no more. It's like a broken record. That's what I would tell him. You sound like a fucking broken record. You just repeat the same shit. So honestly, for your sanity, for your eight-year-old sanity, and just because, why do you want to be somewhere where you don't want to be? anymore you have someone that you like regardless of his age like you said to each his own age doesn't matter as long as he's respecting you and being a person to you and doing the things that you like and you doing the things that he likes and you guys are getting along great then that's all that matters his age does not matter however why would you want to be somewhere with someone who doesn't respect you as a person and is your age you know what i'm saying you feel uncomfortable why should you want to be somewhere okay it's time for your marriage to end you don't know the first steps to take. Let me tell you something. I didn't either. But you know what I fucking did? I, um, I, I, I couldn't afford a lawyer. I couldn't afford that. That was one thing that I couldn't do. I couldn't afford a lawyer to do it. And so what I did, it cost me $160 to get a divorce. I did it myself. Um, what you can do is I, I call my city hall, my local city hall, and I asked them, how do I go about um, doing a divorce on my own? And it's really simple and it's a whole lot more cheaper and I was divorced. It's really simple. Just look for your local agency. Just start with city hall. Those are the, that's where you would, you would file. I know here in Arizona, that's what I, that's where I filed. And, um, it was simple. You know, the papers, it, the papers that they give you, it's step by step by step by step. And I didn't have ink or printer paper at the time and my printer was acting up. So I really couldn't afford to buy a new one. So when I went to city hall where the divorce was, they had, you can make copies for like a dime and stuff. There was a lot of paper. So it gives you instructions on how to do it and they help you. And also what's also cool is, um, they have it to where they have, um, geez, if you can't afford it, so say like, um, like you get any type of services. So say you get like food stamps or any type of Medicaid or any type of services from like any type of local agencies. If you can give them proof of that, because I remember that being on the paper, if you can give them proof of that, like you have low income, it'll be, sometimes it can end up being free in most cases are very, very low fees. So keep that in mind. But yes, your marriage is over, honey. And I'm not saying you are right. I'm not judging you, but don't, you know what I'm saying? Don't go putting your foot in your mouth too much, okay? And talking too much shit because you wrong just as well as he's wrong. However, what she's doing is totally disrespectful and I would let her have it. I would let her know. And then let him know things ain't working out and, you know, you just ready to move on. Bottom line, that is my opinion for Diamond. So let's get on to the next one, okay? Now this one was a little bit weird. The subject was real talk, blast my business on the tube. Hi, April, and thank you so much for taking the time to blast my business on the net. I love you for that. For starters, my name is Francine. I use Frank as an alias. I swear I'm a woman. What the fuck is wrong with me? 34 years old and addicted to internet dating as myself and catfish men. 
You see, I am always told I am so pretty or beautiful, but I can never attract the type of guys I find myself attracted to. So I found a photo of a beautiful woman and created a phony profile on POF. Well, using my account and the pretty girl account, I got to know the guys who passed me by as myself. So basically what she did was she had two accounts. One was of herself and one was of the pretty girl. I really liked three of them and had to retire my account as the other girl and continue my bullshit love quest for myself, which is empty as a box of shoes. I'm tired of being told I'm pretty and I'm really not because no man is interested in me. If he is not attractive the slightest bit, then the guy who love me and want me as their girlfriends who look half as decent have nothing to offer me but some dick. Meaning they can't help me financially. I joined Match.com and that site is dead for me. Girl, please trust me. I know. I have received two messages within one month of using a paid subscription. What the hell do I do? Please don't tell me to love myself. I heard that bullshit before. I would do give anything to be beautiful, and I mean anything. Also, I don't wear makeup, and I keep my brows arched, and I also have my own natural long hair as a black woman. What the hell do I do? Before I consider settling for less, I thought about melting off some of my face as a burn victim. At least when I settle for less, the guy I am with, the guy that I am with can appreciate knowing he has a beautiful woman once upon a time before she accidentally had a fire on her face. Sorry, I'm full of negativity, but I'm mad at the way I look and mad I can't meet a good looking man. Thank you for your time. So I thought it was weird. So I rolled her back and was like, Hey love, how are you? I'm so sorry about how you are feeling. Trust me. I go, I get it totally. I get it. I can't tell you to love yourself because hell I'd be feeling the same way you do the exact same way. So I totally get it at times. I just wanted to tell you that I have read your message and I will be posting this on the real talk since you asked. And if you want and if you want to share anything else with me, then by all means, please do. I'm here and I'm always open to listen. Holds on because my daughter just put some outside my door. Okay, so me, I had to cut this off real quick because Tati texted me and was like, there's a plate outside of your door, honey. She made us lunch. And she made some grilled chicken and shrimp because we both, you know, working out together and... I'm sorry, but I had to, okay? I had okay. So like I said, I wrote her back and I let her know, you know, I know how she feel because sometimes I feel like that too. But, you know, I was I got her message. So she writes me back. Thank you very much for your response, April. I feel free to feel free to use my real name as Francine. I don't mind one bit. And plus, who how's anybody to know that's this mad people named Francine? Mumsy's Mumsy's middle name is Francine. I don't mind one bit. Also, I wanted to add in because I attract unattractive men. Should I be grateful I'm receiving attention of some men versus no men? Shit, I have read these silly match matching matchmaking books from Patty Stanger and other love advice personnel. And you know what, April? It's all a bunch of bullshit. I have a great personality and fun to be around and talkative like you. But if you don't look like a porn star or a sexy celebrity, your personality is non-existence. My same personality pretending to be other women online as catfish. These guys love me. They beg to meet me. It's quite obvious why I can't meet these guys laugh out loud. Thank you so much for your time, April. I truly appreciate it. Good night. So Francine is feeling down. So she's pretty. She's beautiful. People tell her she's beautiful, but she's attracting some assholes. And then what's funny is she has a personality, so she's talkative and she's friendly. She's outgoing like me. However, like she stated, if you don't look like a porn star or some type of celebrity, then it don't matter how fucking good your conversation, your personality, person you are, you ain't getting no play. If you ain't got a banging shape or whatever, or a big ass booty sometimes, it don't matter. Trust me, or and if it does, doesn't matter to some guys, you you do kind of attract the lames, okay? And I can totally relate to that because listen, 
I'm not ugly. And I'm not saying I'm a goddess. Like, everybody's going to be like, oh, hell to the queen. Oh, hell to queen. You know what I'm saying? I'm not that. I know, God damn it, when I put on my face and my hair or my little turban wrap and my little body garment, whatever, I look like a totally different me, but I still feel good. However, when I have my days when I'm just talkative and nice and responsive to people, it's like you wouldn't even give me two fucking glimpses, okay? As well as that is if you see me and I'm and I'm still put together, but I ain't got that boot body shape or I don't look so glamorized, then that one guy that I might be interested in and looks like something, he ain't thinking about me. He ain't. And she's right. And I'm pretty sure that there are a lot of other women out there that's watching this can relate. It's like not because we're pretty and not because we have a personality, but it's like, why do we attract the ones that are fucking lames? And then you see the women that ain't about shit. And I'm not going to say ugly because I don't think anybody is ugly because we are all different in our own ways. And, you know, you can be ugly and really pretty on the outside and have this nasty ass attitude on the inside. And fuck it, you're ugly. That's what I feel is ugly. But it's like, People that have just like the good aura or just a great person. Why do we seem to attract the low life niggas? Okay. But then it's the bitches that want to be side chicks, like side biscuits, side fries and shit, right? Side rice and don't have anything going for themselves or nasty or rude, have no personality. How come they get the guys that are all about something that have just things going on for themselves. And I say this a lot to my friend all the time. Like, how come these females that will cheat on you, treat you like shit, and ain't about shit, get the good guys? Like, what am I doing wrong? I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Hello, I'm here. And it's not like I'm trying to settle for less, but I too would like to be loved. I too would like to feel like I am a person and I am beautiful. And then it get, you get the ones who feed you all that hocus pocus bullshit and then you fall for it because we're such a loving person and they see that we're such great people and they shit all on us and they treat us like shit. Hence the last relationship that I'm talking about. And I don't understand. And so, F Francine. Okay, what the fuck is this? All right, I don't know if this is like a good thing or not right now. But can you guys see this on the bottom of my screen? Facebook, right? That little circle. Why is this old ass man? Okay, so the last time he wrote me. Why does he keep fucking sending me messages, okay? Rick Foster, if I am not replying back to you, okay? Can you guys see that? If I'm not replying back to you, I hope you guys can see that. I'm trying to get it like to focus. There. You see that, right? You just see him. If I'm not replying to you, like, <sighs> please stop fucking messaging me. With your old nasty looking ass self. Like cut it out already. Just fucking cut it out. The, and you know what's so funny? She just fucking said. That, she just said that shit. Like, this is the shit that I get. Like okay. I'm a great person. I'm a nice person. I will do anything in the world for people. But I get these fucking broke down motherfuckers that always be trying to holler at me or some old ass looking motherfucker. Like, nigga, get out of my face. Bye. And I, I'm sorry, but I have come to the realization that I ain't trying to be too picky, but a bitch ain't selling for nothing. So, Francine, my thing to you is this. Yeah, we do both are kind of like in the same book. We both trying to find love. Don't settle for no bullshit, okay? Just because you want a relationship and you want to find somebody, trust the bitch. I know, okay? If you lived out here in Arizona, I would tell you, listen, we're going to meet up, you and I, and sooner or later, we're going to attract the right motherfucker, okay? I think with me and you, you know something? 
I used to go on POF too. And the motherfuckers on POF, you got to be very skeptical of them because POF to me stands for like a lot of people say, uh, what is it? It stands for plenty of fish, but it's supposed to say something like something about pussy or some shit. I don't know, but the guys on plenty of fish and what the fuck kind of name was that? But they are all about getting some coochie. Okay. So that's one site to stay off of match.com. I think I'm going to be honest and say this. I think like a lot of these fucking websites to find real love is a bunch of bullshit. You guys know I paid for a month subscription with match.com and I got like a lot of responses, but I met white boy and I don't mean no, no harm by saying it like that, but he talk about how he don't like people's cars being dirty and he could tell, but your microwave was like a fucking nasty shithole for fucking cockroaches look like they lived in there. You know what I mean? And he just was getting a little bit too attached. So I just think that these fucking websites for meeting somebody is just for you to meet them online and stay online. I really don't think that half of these people that are in or on these match.com sites or any on these on internet web they I don't think that any of these people on these internet web dating sites really even exist. You know what I'm saying? Like one of them on POF, you know, when this is, he just was, this is like a long time ago with me. He asked me, was I real because of my pictures? And I was like, what are you talking about? So we finally met each other. We became really good friends, but when he first met me, he was like, oh my God, you are a real person. And I'm like, what are you talking about? So he moved to Texas and I'm like, what are you talking about? And he was like, because I didn't believe that you were a real person because you're so pretty and you're on here and you're looking for love. Yes, pretty bitches need love too, okay? And it's fucked up. And he was a really nice guy. His name is Billy Ray. Yes, he was a black guy and he moved to Texas and stuff and he really wasn't my type, but he was a really nice guy. So we remain like really good friends. And he, he'll text me and send me messages from time to time. And he's a really cool guy. And he just started seeming really not weird, but he found me on like all kinds of social medias that I never told him about. So it was kind of like, okay, too much for me, dude. You know what I'm saying? And he was showing my pictures to like his mom and him. And it was like, okay, I only knew you for a week now. Okay. Let's like ease off a little bit, but yeah, pretty bitches do need love too. And Francine, I don't really know what to tell you about that. Like, I'm in the same predicament as you. You know what I'm saying? I get these lame-ass niggas, these lame-ass dudes, and it's like, okay, you know what? What I'm going to do is, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to the neighborhoods that got the guys that are upper class and are older, older than me, who just want to have a relationship with a woman and don't want booty. And if they get booty, it's cool, but they want to build something. Yeah, he might be like 60 or whatever, but at least he'll be a decent human being to me. This is what I started thinking recently because yes, I do get tired of being alone sometimes. And then sometimes I get in my mood where it's like, oh, please, I don't need nobody being around me all the time. I'm calling my phone like, oh, where you at? When you coming over? What you doing? You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. I don't really need that. So I try to like leave that alone. But yes, I do get lonely too sometimes. And you know what? I try to find shit to do and to, uh, to just occupy my my mind and a lot, a lot of people have that so francine the only thing that i can tell you is this bitch don't fucking settle for no fucking low life and bitch don't go burning your face off either just to find a man because you could still find a low life okay or then the nigga could really be picking and be like oh she got burned skin i ain't trying to fuck with her because people don't look at the insides you know what i'm saying that's just the problem people are so shallow today so i tell you what and this is a fucked up thing to say it seems like when we stop looking then we find something and it seems like when we be really looking Looking, we are kind of like desperate for love so we kind of like our guard is let down and our, our our fucking guard our visual of everything that we would normally be aware of and we settle for less so with that being said don't look anymore you know what I'm saying? Stop looking because we seem kind of desperate sometimes when we look. And we when we look, we run into like the wrong motherfuckers. And then when we don't look, we kind of run into the right ones. Who knows when the fuck that's going to be? But a bitch still got high hopes and it's still, I got faith that it'll be sometime before my black ass fucking die. Okay? Yes. Before my black ass fucking die. I would hope that I would find love. And you know what? 
if I don't, then hey, it is what it is. And maybe I wasn't meant to be with nobody. I don't know. Either way, neither here nor there. I'm very hopeful. You know what I'm saying? I am. All right, you guys. So I only did two this week because you know what time it is. I try to do them early and I should have did this earlier, but it is 2.54 here Tuesday and my boo-boo gets out at 3.10. So I try to be there parked and ready so she can see my smiling face. So on that note, I'm going to end this with I love you guys. Stay diva and devolicious. Never settle for less, okay? Never. And leave your comments below, and I'll see you guys on my next video. And peace out.